Hey guys, I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning in to TFB TV. This is a Militia Works Joe Carbine. I'm going to be reviewing this rifle today, but I'm also going to be using it as a prop woven into a larger narrative about the value of high-end ARs. Don't be fooled by all the empty Miller Lite cans scattered around the office. TFB TV is actually a very highbrow production. So Militia Works is a boutique AR builder based out of Wisconsin, home of the second best cheese in these United States. And the Joe Carbine is their entry level rifle model coming in at a starting price of just under $1,000, which is one of those nice round numbers that's useful for discussing budgets. If you guys have watched some of the videos that I've done about ARs in the past, you've probably heard me say something to the effect that if you've got $1,000 to spend on a rifle, you probably shouldn't spend your entire budget on the rifle. You should get something cheaper, like a Ruger MPR, and use the leftover money in the budget for essentials, like a weapon light, a sling, an optic, extra magazines, and some ammunition. Because if you just take that $1,000 rifle out of the box, it's basically just a paperweight. I still very strongly believe that your first rifle should be a budget-priced beater that you can accessorize properly, spend a lot of time shooting, and not worry about it too much. I mostly use that example for the sake of argument, so obviously there's going to be people who are willing to spend more money on the total package, or people who are shopping for a second rifle. So why would you want to spend more money on a rifle? First reason is to get better parts. You spend more money on the rifle, you can probably get a nicer rifle, at least on paper. There are plenty of examples of high-end rifles out there where you're paying for expensive and heavy billet receiver sets or expensive and aggressive machining to the handguard, and then the actual operating components of the gun are pretty much garbage. Like you'll get a 4140 mystery meat barrel, you'll get a Wish.com tier bolt carrier group made out of God knows what. That is not the case with this rifle. This one has a ballistic advantage barrel, so it's 4150 CRMOV, has a pinned gas block, it has a properly staked MPI HPI bolt carrier group. The bolt is made out of 9310 steel. It's actually better than Millspec Carpenter 158. Also, it's a minor touch, but this gun comes with an OK Industries Sure Feed with a laser engraved logo on it instead of the ubiquitous Gen 2 Black PMAG that basically everybody seems to include. The second reason to go high-end is quality control. I 100% believe that Palmetto State Armory and Ruger can build a good AR. I just think that occasionally one or two bad guns is going to slip through the cracks. Ruger and PSA make a huge number of guns and not all of them get properly checked for quality, whereas this one was individually tested and also test fired. The empty cases were included in the box. The third reason to go high-end is the little details, the stuff that you probably don't notice or think about unless you've been shooting and building ARs for a while. So for example, all of the Militia Works rifles have a lapped upper receiver for improved barrel fit. The feed ramps on the barrel have been polished. The lower receivers have a mil-spec fire control group pocket. If you know what that means, then you know why you want it, and if you don't, then don't worry about it and stop asking questions. The castle nut and the end plate have been properly staked. This is actually one of the beefiest stake jobs I've ever seen. It's like the filet mignon of stake jobs. But after they were staked, the castle nut and the end plate were re-blued, so it has an even finish. It's also going to be more corrosion resistant than exposed metal. This obsessive attention to detail might not come as a surprise on the Militia Works $1600 flagship rifle, the Dissident, which is a very nice rifle made extremely well. The Joe Carbine is a very basic rifle made extremely well. Both guns are built off the same receiver set, and they have the same barrel and bolt carrier group. Both guns also have a nifty right side bolt release button, which eliminates the only advantage lefties have ever had when running an AR. I think we can agree that they're pretty much an evolutionary dead end at this point. This is not a feature designed to make the gun ambidextrous. It's entirely designed to make the gun easier and faster to use for a normal right-handed person. It's also safer than a bad lever and doesn't have the potential to cause a follow-on reliability issue. So the real party trick of all the uh, Militia Works rifles is this right here. This is the ambidextrous bolt drop button. This one, the Joe Carbine, is not fully ambidextrous. The higher-end Dissident does have uh, ambidextrous selector and an ambidextrous magazine release. This one still has the bolt drop button, but everything else is classic uh, mil-spec style controls, which is actually my preferred setup of controls anyway. I don't believe in the left-handed, so that works just fine for me. Anyways, when would you want to use this bolt drop button? So let's go this way here for a second. If you go for a reload and you're going from a belt line or a pocket or something like that, you're probably going to be holding the magazine like this. Some people refer to it, I think, as the beer can grip. Stick this magazine in, and your thumb is pretty much right in line with the bolt drop button. So Clint Smith would say God and Eugene Stoner got together to make that a possibility, which is true and that is a great way to reload if you're coming from a belt line it's 
does feel very natural. However, most of your magazines are not going to be on your belt line. Most of your magazines are going to be in uh, LBE or a shingle on a plate carrier, or if you're wearing uh, like a real deal jungle belt kit, they're going to be in flap top pouches on the belt. Which means that you're going to pull them out like this. So that's going to be sort of a two-step process. Not the end of the world, still pretty easy to do. However, trying to nail that button is a little bit more difficult when you have to make that extra hand motion, which is why a lot of people, probably including me, will oftentimes just slap it because it's easier to get some part of your entire hand over some part of that entire button than it is to get your thumb directly on it. Now, you can do it a whole heck of a lot faster if you have an ambidextrous bolt drop button. So, it's a nice feature. I thought it was really more of a uh, quality of life improvement and that it wasn't that big of a deal, but now that I'm used to using it, I really don't want to go back to using anything else. The Joe and the Dissident are very similar on the inside, but the rest of the Joe is pretty bare bones. A2 grip, car 15 stock, A2 flash hider, mil spec charging handle, mil spec trigger. Even the handguard is a simpler design. I shot the Joe in its factory configuration for a couple of range trips, but it really demands to be customized. The rifle doesn't need anything to make it usable, but buying an AR and leaving it stuck is like buying a new TV and leaving the plastic film on the screen. None of the parts you'll want to change on the Joe require you to mess with the operating components of the gun. Swapping grips, stocks, muzzle devices, and triggers on an AR is easy and has virtually no chance of affecting the reliability of the firearm. Unless you buy some ridiculous trigger kit or Bubba the absolute fuck out of it, obviously. If you're buying any AR with the intention to replace major operating components like the barrel, bolt carrier, or gas system, you should consider shopping around for something else. So all the components you're going to want to replace on this rifle are the ones that people tend to be the most strongly opinionated about. For example, grip, A2 grip, functional, but I'm not a big fan of it. I think the trigger reach is a little too short, it's kind of uncomfortable. Also, it's so short that my index finger ends up going well beyond the easy access point for this bolt drop button. So thicker grip, move my hand back a little bit more, and the bolt drop will be right where I want it. Also, stock. This stock is a little bit above a placeholder because it is fully functional with the sling QDs on it. However, I'd still probably replace it with a Magpul one. Everybody's got very strong opinions about stocks. I would prefer the Magpul CTR or the Magpul SL stock. Those both also weigh a little bit more than this, which will help the rifle balance more. I think the stock is a really bad place to cut weight on your rifle. That's why you've probably never seen me run an MFT Minimalist, and you probably never will. Trigger, also something you're probably going to want to replace. Everybody's got their opinions on what the best triggers are. Probably already typing a comment right now. If I said uh, I was going to replace this with an ALG Act, I'm sure a lot of people would recommend the LaRue MBT2TS. MBT2S? MB, yeah, whatever. LaRue. Uh, you, know, you know the one I'm talking about. Um, but if I recommended the LaRue, everybody would be recommending something else, probably the Geisley. So it doesn't really matter in the end. As for the muzzle device, probably again, a lot of people are not going to want to stick with an A2 birdcage, even though you probably should. You really can't do a whole lot better than a birdcage flash hider. It's short, it's light, it's small, it's cheap, it's effective. Probably going to put a uh, suppressor mount on there or, you know, some kind of gamer break, whatever it is you kids are into these days. As far as shooting characteristics of the Joe, there's not much I can say. It's an AR with a 16-inch barrel and a mid-length gas system. That's pretty much the current default configuration for a civilian AR because it's the best, most versatile system that fits within the bounds of U.S. firearms law. Unsurprisingly, the gun is smooth, controllable, reliable, and has a perfectly acceptable mil-spec trigger. All right, let's try to work our way towards a conclusion here. There are a lot of thousand dollar rifles out there that are functionally worse than a rack grade Ruger MPR, despite what the battle worn paint job and skeletonized billet lower may lead you to believe. On the other end of the spectrum are rifles like the Joe, mechanically solid guns with plain placeholder furniture. It's a template for customization. At the base price of $9.99, the Joe comes with an interrupted top rail. I prefer a full-length rail for use with IR laser designators or pressure switches. Luckily, that's an option available on the Joe for a couple extra bucks. I replace the trigger with an ALG ACT. I replace the grip, stock, and trigger guard with Magpul parts. This example is also Cerakoted in Patriot Brown, which is like normal brown, but for Patriots. If you add it all up, we're getting close to the price of the flagship Militia Works rifle, the Dissident. 
and it just so happens that the way I set up the Joe looks remarkably similar to the Dissident Alpha, which also uses Magpul furniture and an ALG ACT trigger. The Dissident also has a nicer Midwest Industries rail, an ambidextrous charging handle, and it's Cerakoted at no extra cost. Normally I'm happy to just spray paint my rifles, but I have to admit the Cerakote job is much cleaner. So should I buy a Joe Carbine? No, because the Dissident is exactly the sort of rifle I would build if I ever stopped tinkering with ARs and decided to settle down. It's basically my dream gun. It might be the only AR I've ever seen that I would buy and leave completely stock. So if you want a nice AR, you can get something like the Joe Carbine and customize the small details to suit yourself. But if you do a little searching and look beyond the usual suspects like BCM and Sol GW, you might find a rifle out there that's already perfect. Yeah, you can always build one yourself and save some money. Building an AR is easy. Building an AR properly isn't too difficult, but building one this well takes quite a bit of skill. If you're still looking for your first rifle, then my advice still applies. Buy a beater, set it up just right, and run the piss out of it. When it comes time to shop around for a second one, you can absolutely spend more money to get more rifle. Just make sure to look past the price tag and actually read the spec sheet, and if they won't give you a spec sheet, run. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We are also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Patreon. There are links to both of those in the video description. Check them out. If you join up, you're eligible for all the cool giveaways that James puts together as a way of saying thank you. Click the links, check that stuff out. See you next time.